Good morning, friends. Uh, restarting once again. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to wait a minute for people to come on, for those of you that are watching later. I uh, started off today with a song entitled um, The Heart of Music. Ooh, it's raining out there right now. Um, but uh, today we're going to be talking about Matthew 6. And uh, welcome uh, to those people that are coming back on. I apologize for the 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 uh, canceling of the last video, but I'm glad you're coming back and joining us. So today we're looking at Matthew 6, and we're looking at why you do what you do. If you want to listen to some music to start you off, I invite you to, to play uh, a version of uh, <laughs> the heart of, of worship, because I'm going to talk a little bit about it. But thank you all for coming back on. Um, so let me say good morning to those people that are here and back. Good morning, Michelle. Uh, I hope you all return safely from your trip. Uh, it's good to have you here this morning, praying for you and Susan. Uh, I think you wrote something about the Outer Banks. I'm not sure if you're down there now, but praying for you, praying for your family. It's good to have you here. Good morning, Esther. Welcome. I'm glad you're with us. Holding you in prayer as we begin this day. And Barbara, it's good to have you back. I'm praying for you this morning. I'm glad you're with us too. Good morning, Donna. We're holding you in prayer as you travel down to New Jersey for your, your daughter's baby, your daughter-in-law's baby shower. Um, I'm glad you're here today. And Debbie, welcome. It's good to have you here with us. Praying for you as we start this day. Good morning, Augusta. I'm glad you're uh, here with us also, holding you in prayer uh, this morning as well. So let's take a look at Matthew 6, 1. And uh, as you open up your Bibles there, my name is Cindy Stauffer. I'm blessed to serve as the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And uh, just to let you know, today it is raining, but tomorrow it is going to be beautiful, and we're going to be worshiping um, at Johnson Park, Grove One, uh, at 11 a.m., and then sharing together in a picnic. So uh, I, it's going to be a wonderful day. I look forward to seeing some of you there, um, and we'll try to live stream a little as well. But welcome. It's good to have you here today. Let's take a look at Matthew 6, 1. Uh, this is from the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then... You have no reward from your Father in heaven. So our devotion comes from Joyce Meyer's Strength for Each Day, and it's entitled, Why Do You Do What You Do? Why do you do what you do? She says, God is more concerned with the why we do than the what we do. God sees our hearts, and only good works done from a pure heart will bring a reward. We often fall into a trap of trying to impress people who, who ultimately don't matter because they don't truly care for us and will likely abandon us if we don't please them. We need to pay attention to what is really important. And the most important thing is that we please God, not other people. Beware of doing good works to be noticed, gain applause, or be admired and well thought of. Do your good works in obedience to God and to help others because you love them. Good works cannot get us into heaven, but they can bring us rewards from God when they are done with pure motives. Take time to examine everything you are doing and be bold enough to ask yourself, why are you doing it? As your motives become clear, you may decide to cross off a lot of things on your to-do list 
and become more energized to do the things that are doing, that you are doing with a pure motive. This is a very challenging um, scripture for so many um, because it is easy to get lulled into the desire to please us, to please others. And I don't know how many of you are people pleasers, but there are a whole lot of people pleasers in the world. And it isn't a bad thing to want to please people, but if we are go bending over backwards just to get approval from everyone around us, we can easily be led down roads that we're not meant to be on. When Jesus says, beware of practicing your piety, be piety before others to be seen by them, he is aware of how quickly religious church people can get can get swept up in it. You know, look at how good I am. See what I have done. Um, it makes them feel, it puffs them up, puffs them up. But when we can come back and realize uh, what matters more than anything is our devotion to God, to God's kingdom, to living out what God's called us to do. Many years ago, um, we were doing a whole rethink. Uh, this is before I was even a pastor. I was working in music. Uh, actually, this was before that too. So many, many years ago, we were doing a rethink of what worship should look like. And we came across the song that I started with that we got cut off from called The Heart of Worship. And uh, the song was written uh, from a church that felt like they had just gotten off track. They were bending over backwards to to do this, this, this um, great production. And they realized they had lost touch with what really mattered, which was Jesus. Jesus was the heart of it, their devotion to what God had done through the life of Jesus, to, to um, what it meant to truly just kind of let all that other stuff go and just worship, just worship uh, with our whole heart. It's hard. All of this is very hard because the world will tell you this is what we want. We want it to look like this. or We want it to feel like this. Um, and so when we were asking people in preparation for our looking at worship, uh, we asked them, we didn't ask them, what do you like or what do you not like? Or, or what's your favorite style of music? Or, or how do you think this should be done? We asked them, where do you encounter Jesus, where do you encounter the divine presence in the midst of worship? Because ultimately that's what it's about. Where do we encounter God's presence? And it was from there that we did our work to uh, get back to what, what we believe worship could and should look like. And that's with Jesus at the center. And it's the same for all of our lives. Where are we encountering God's presence? Where are, where, where are the things that we are doing so centered on God and God's will and God's love and God's presence uh, that the things we're doing are coming from a pure heart, not from how's this going to bless me or how, how am I going to look? How am I going to receive praise and accolades to how do we see Jesus in the midst of that? How do we see God's love working here? And that's a challenge for each of our days. Where is God's presence? How am I reflecting God's love in this? So I want to encourage you today as you walk through your day, 
no matter what you may be facing or, or uh, where you will be going, to ask yourself periodically, how am I reflecting God's love? How are the things I'm doing help others to see Jesus? That's ultimately the goal. How can we help others see the love and the light of Jesus? So as we come into this time of prayer, I invite you to uh, open yourself up. Ask God to use you in ways that will glorify God in all that you do. Let's pray. God, we come today grateful for all that you have done in our lives. We see your goodness all around us. We see the, fig the fingerprints of your love all over the world around us. Each day, you give us so many opportunities to see you, to see your presence, to see the gifts um, of life and love. But too often we either close our eyes to it or we have become too absorbed in being seen ourselves, being accepted being praised and we miss out. Lord, we come this morning. We ask you to tune our hearts that we might sing your praise, that we might reflect your love that we might praise you again and again so that in our living and in our loving, others may see you more fully. Let this be our desire. Let this be our goal. Lead us today, Lord, so that every place we go, every room we enter, every experience we step into, we might seek your presence and help others to see you more fully. More of you, less of us. More of you this day. We ask all of this in your name, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praying for each of you this day that in your living and in your loving, others might see Jesus. Just a reminder, I said this before, our picnic is on Sunday, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Johnson Park Grove 1. So I hope you can join us. It's going to be a great day. Uh, you can bring food if you want, uh, and but there'll be plenty of food and games and fellowship and worship, and, and it'll all be about Jesus. So uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, tomorrow at 11. Please keep in prayer Ruby and Mark uh, as they get married today, uh, praying for some of the situations in all of your lives. Um, but remember, my friends, God loves you, and so do I. Have a very blessed day, and I will see you back here. I'll see you tomorrow at the picnic. If not at the picnic, I'll see you Monday. Bye, friends.